Welcome to Crossiums. In this chapter, we are going to show you how to make a B ring, being able to modify its size, profile, and everything we want in an easy and simple way. Now, let's design. The first thing we will do is open the rings panel and we'll create a ring rail. Select the default size, 7, and confirm. Select the ring and open the planify command. This will generate a flat curve based on the length of the selected curve to be able to work on it. Confirm and right click to make another planify and move it 3 mm. Confirm and let's go to the top to work on the B ring curve. First, we will make the auto blend curves. Select the bottom curve and second the top curve and modify the end position to a quarter of the curve and reverse it. Change the continuity to position to make the tip of the B ring. Confirm, right click and link this curve to the curve above. Move the start position to the end and the end position to the middle. Set both to position. So that is a straight line connected to both points. Now we select both curves and we are going to do a mirror. We select mirror vertical Confirm and let's join them together so we can work on the curve. So we go to the join and confirm. Once we have it, we will click on the tab to extract the individual curves so that we can easily modify them later. For example, we could modify the curve in this way and as you can see, we would modify the behavior of the whole curve. Now we are going to go to the perspective view. Let's explain what happens when we make a sweep on a curve, for those who don't know. We are going to make a profile placer, and as we check, the profile is in reference to the direction of the curve. This will make the sweep come out uniform throughout the curve. On the other hand, if we take this way, the curve will come out bent as we will see now. We'll enable the mirror and confirm. Select Auto Sweep, select the Join as Rail and the Profiles. Well, what happens here? We are gonna check the sizes from this point to this point, more or less and this size, okay, we will see that they do not correspond. This is because the profile is bent over the base of the curve. And when the curve is generated, it is bent leaving the width of 1.36. To solve this, we will do the following thing. This will help you a lot when making this type of rings or other objects. We are going to hide this. We are going to create another profile that we are going to link to the blend. We are going to position it at the end and then mirror it. We confirm and we are going to edit the auto sweep to add these profiles. So now the size of the center will always correspond to the size of the profile, but in the tip profile it will be smaller. To check it, we are going to do the flow by curve. As baseline, we select the initial planify. And as target, the ring rail, and then we confirm. Here we will check that if we move the planify, and lengthen the sweep, it will be thinner. To solve this, we create a metal on curve on the join as a size reference. 
we select metal on curve, rotate it upwards, and select the same size we want in the sweep, in this case 1.5. Confirm, go to the top, and select the profile, and with the scroll button, we will edit. Now we have a base on which we can check the size that would correspond if the profile went in that direction. In this way, we will easily obtain a bearing with the size that corresponds to it. Now we are going to show you uh, that we can change the profiles in a quick way. So we select the metal on curve and hide it. Select both profiles, change the size, select both profiles, we edit them, and we are going to modify the width. For example, 2.3, more or less. Okay, and we are going to change the profile and select this one. I think that it looks cool, so we confirm, and we have to change the profile of the tip, because we are going to enlarge it. We move the translation horizontal to 15 and confirm. Remember, <clears throat> remember also that, as I told you in the beginning, we can modify the end position of the auto blend so that uh, the fold of the peering starts from above or below. If we were to do it from above, we would have to come here and modify it. Since we gave the profile 2.3, we are going to come here and tell the reference we created the metal on curve 2.3 as size. This way we can modify our T profile to the size that fits well. Once we get it, we confirm, and we would already have our ring with the desired size. Well, we are going to modify the sweep to give it to close, so that the ring is closed when the flow by curve is generated. If not, we will not be able to make holes on it. Let's continue from the tools panel. Add an ISO curve, and select the flow. We are going to add two ISO curves. We confirm and we right click to add a second one. Select the flow and confirm. The first one will correspond to the individual gem that we will put manually. So we hide the first ISO curve. Now we create a gem, there's a curve, and create a gem. We select curves on this drop down and press position. We can add the gem on the tip and then press escape key. We modify the size to 1.5 and the placement to the table. Okay. Now we can move the gem manually with the gamble. Just a little down. This gem can be moved by hand with the gumball as it will always remain in the correct position on the basis of the ISO curve, as well as the profiles will be maintained. So if we modify the size of the ring rail, this gem will always remain in its lane, as well as the profiles will remain located in its position, being able to modify to any size as long as we do not make it teeny, in which case we will have to modify the profile. Now we hide the ISO curve to apply the Jameson curve on the other ISO curve. We will edit the size to 1.3 and from options we will adapt it to the central gem. We will set the gem placement to table. If we change the display to wireframe, we can see the gems better. It helps us to see the gems clearly. Now we are going to create a channel cutter of these gems. We can make the channel cutter a little bit bigger 
or change the profiles to make it more rounded. Done with the channel cutter, we go to boolean difference and select the flow as subject A and channel cutter as subject B. Staying this way, we could even move a little more the central stone to better fit the channel cutter. I'm gonna edit the channel cutter a little bit to fit it better. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is the gem cutter. We select all the gems, we are going to lower the taper, and the rest uh, we are going to let it as default. We confirm and we are going to make another boolean difference to subtract our cutter to the object. Now we will add the prongs with the command prongs and row, and we will select the gems and curve. From here we can modify the sizes or move the prongs horizontally. We can increase a little bit the thickness, and we are going to confirm. So now we are going to select this gem and select prongs and gem. We are going to select one prong and rotate it to the center. OK. And we are going to change the profile. And we are going to increase the size. OK. We can modify the height if we want. A little bit, the taper. So we confirm, and as you can see, now we have our ring with the prongs and everything OK. We can restore the channel cutter, so if we want to modify it, it would be easily. So I'm going to change the lateral distance to 0 0.1 and confirm. In this way, we would have our B ring in a simple way, being able to modify it as much as we want. Now, as final part, I'm gonna show you how to add more B rings. The easiest way could be save and just modify this ring, but there are two different options. To do this, the first thing we will do is to make an offset of the ring. And in the case that we want to make another type of ring in this part, but with another size, of course, in this case we could not edit the planify, because we would always modify the ring that is created. One option is to go to the boolean, take the flow, restore it, and in this part we would unlink. If we unlink the flow that we have used at the beginning to make our construction, this object will remain static. However, if we modify the size of the ring, it would not adapt because we would break the parametric history of the flow. Being able to edit the previous commands and reuse them without modifying the ring. The second option would be to recreate the curves, profiles and sweep to make the flow again. I'm going to show you quickly how I would do it. Basically, I'm going to duplicate all the objects and relink them following the same steps that I did in the beginning. First the planify and I'll move it. Now I duplicate the curves and the mirror. I will select the curves to relink them as I did in the beginning, but with a new planify. As you can see, I select everything and change the curves to the new ones. Once I have them, I will make a new join and I will restore them again. Now I will do the same, but with the profiles. I will duplicate them, and I will link them with the new created curves. I relink the profiles one by one. Now I relink this, confirm, and I will do the auto sweep with the new profiles. 
This saves me having to recreate all the profiles and curves again. I modify the planify distance a little bit and edit the profiles, changing the shape of the profile and rotate them to give a new style. When I get it, the only thing to do is to make the flow by curve and select the new planify as base and the offset we have made as target. And now we can modify it as we want. I will adapt it and bring it closer to the other ring. And I will rotate it a little bit more to leave the form that interests me more. While I do the final part of the ring, which is again to repeat the whole process, I will play music for you. Finally, I'm going to show you how this parametric ring can be changed to various sizes and modify anything before and after the process. So let's modify the size of the ring from 7 to 10. Remember that this change may take a while because it must make the changes and all the holes again. So it will depend somewhat on your computer. When making several sizes large or small, it is possible that the gems no longer fit the center of the gem. But this is easily fixed by repositioning the start and end point. I hope this tutorial has helped you to make P-rings and learn more about cross gems. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, don't forget to subscribe. To stay tuned with the latest news, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook and other social networks. If you have any questions, comment below. See you in the next chapter.